Today on Ham Radio Q&A, do you want to make a quick 100? No, I mean 200 points this field day. Well, keep watching and I'll show you how. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio Q&A. I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. The ARRL offers several bonuses that you can use to pad your score on field day. Some are easy, some are challenging, and some are just a lot of fun. I've got a video that lists the bonuses that are available, so I'll throw a link up here so you can uh, check that out. But two such bonuses that often get overlooked and are not that difficult to accomplish are both deal with message handling and sending and, and receiving NTS radiograms. The first bonus is that you can receive 100 points if you send a formal message to your ARRL section manager or section emergency coordinator. Once you do that, you can also get another 100 point bonus for sending 10 or more NTS messages to whomever else. You get 10 points for each message that you originate up to 100 points. Now the first bonus message doesn't count towards the 10 additional messages, so you're going to have to come up with a total of 11 messages for that 200 point bonus. But I think that's might, what, what might scare off a lot of people. But it doesn't have to be that way, as sending NTS traffic isn't that hard and actually can be a lot of fun. A long time ago, you know, I somehow got tasked with sending these messages, even though, you know, I'm not a traffic handler and didn't make regular appearances on the traffic nets. You know, it's that was my job on field day was to send the radiograms. I did figure out the process and found it was a fun diversion at field day. It also made me feel more comfortable in handling messages so that if I hear one on the air that someone has a message, you know, for our area, I'll receive it and deliver it to the intended party. But in this video, I'm just going to take you through the steps to quickly form a radiogram and send it over the air. In a future video, we can talk more about some of the advanced and quirky features of the National Traffic System. But first, let's back up a bit and talk about what the National Traffic System is and what radiograms are. The National Traffic System is an organized network of amateur radio operators sponsored by the ARRL for the purpose of relaying messages throughout the US and Canada. That's the official definition. But basically it's composed of message or traffic nets that operate on local, state, and a regional level. A message can originate in a local or state net and then it's moved to one of the more regional nets and then back down to a local or state net until it reaches its destination. The NTS is an efficient, albeit not very speedy, method of sending messages anywhere in the US and Canada. These messages are called radiograms. Way back in the day, when, an, when the national traffic system was formed, making a telephone call was expensive and sending a telegram may have been a preferred method of communication. Hams sending messages to friends and loved ones took on that similar form. You know, they called their messages radiograms, and receiving a radiogram via ham radio was a more common occurrence back then. If you look at a modern radiogram form, uh, you'll see that, you know, it, that's pretty much where the comparison stops. It looks a lot like a telegram form, but it's not. Well, today the practice in sending, re uh, receiving radiograms continues, but primarily they are used as practice for handling messages in times of disaster. This history of the national traffic system barely scratches the surface of the program. We're going to talk more about the mechanics of sending a simple message. Messages can be sent via CW, voice, or digital modes. Sending a message on one of the voice or phone nets is probably the easiest, but if you are proficient with WinLink, you can also send a radiogram as a WinLink email. More on that in a bit. First off, you'll need a radiogram form. You know, you can download these uh, from the ARRL website. I got a link uh, for them in the, in the video description below. And once you have your form, now you, now you need to know, you know, um, who to send it to, and that would be your section manager or section emergency coordinator. The ARRL lists these people on their website, so you can go to ARRL.org slash sections and look up the name of your section manager on their list. Links to all of this information, like I said, can be found in the video description below. So let's look at the radiogram form. You know, the form consists of six parts. The preamble, address, 
send uh, receiving station, the body text, the signature, and you know the and the received and sent blocks. I'll break down each part. In the preamble, you have the message number. This is assigned by the message originator, which was you. There is no standard method, so you can use any number. You know, most message handlers will just start with one with the number and then and then sequentially increment that with each message that go up. I usually start with 101 and go up from there. Next is the precedence. This indicates the status of the message, you know, either emergency, priority, health and welfare, or routine. 99.9% .9 of messages are routine, so put an R in that box. Next is the handling instructions. This field is optional, but you can give special instructions on how the message should be handled upon its destination. For our sample message, we're going to leave that blank. Station of origin. Since you are creating the message, you know, put, put in your call sign or your club station's call sign, depending on where it's originating from. Check is the number of words in the body of the message. After you fill out the message body, you'll enter the check number in this box. Place of origin is your city and state. And finally, the time and the date. This is the time and date the message originated. Moving on, the address area is for whom the message is intended for. If you're sending a message to your section manager, you would put in their call sign, name, and city and state. If you don't know who your section manager is, like I said, you can go to the ARL website and look it up. For this particular message, the telephone number is optional. So I added my section manager's name, you know, KA1RB, Patrick Moretti of Delsman, Wisconsin. The box marked this message was received at can be ignored. Since we are sending a message, we don't need to fill this information out. Next is the body. A radiogram should be no more than 25 words. In fact, shorter is often better, so think of a creative way to send your message with the fewest words possible. The body area consists of five columns of, and five rows for a total of 25 groups. Remember the check? You know, this makes it easier to count your words. So what should you send? Well, basically the easiest thing is to say your group's name, location, and the number of operators that are at the site. So a sample message could be, the Wisconsin Valley Radio Association in Wausau has 25 operators this field day weekend. After passing the message, you'll say break and then give your name and call sign. That's the end of the message. Don't forget the check and to add that in the preamble of your message. The check for our message is 14. You can track who received the message on the, on the net by recording the call sign, time and date it was sent in the lower right of the message. Now a couple of notes in drafting your message. If you need to um, break your message into sentences, you can use the letter X as an X-ray to mark a period. This counts for one word, but you do not need an X-ray or a period at the end of your message. If you're sending a question, use the word query for the question mark, and that also counts as a word. Unusual or confusing words should also be spelled phonetically. Abbreviations should be spelled phonetically. And numbers will count as one word, and you should use the word figures before you say the number. For example, my 25, as in the attendance of the event, would be said over the air as figures 25. So how does this sound like over the air? Well, I have an audio recording of a radiogram delivered over the air so you can get an idea of what they sound like. Now would be a good time to pause the video, grab a piece of paper and a pencil, and see if you can copy that message. All stations prepare to copy. Follows number 119. Routine.
bowl. Todd Daily Letter Group of November Tango Sierra. I say again, Letter Group November Tango Sierra. Lima Golf Uniform Slant Sierra Tango Mike. The text again. Learn or brush up on CW Skills X ray. CW is a reliable alternative mode X ray. Practice is available on daily NTS net. Is there anyone need to fill out the message? Finally, how do you deliver the message? Well, there are several NTS traffic nets on the air. The ARRL has a directory of nets, and you can search for and filter out the NTS uh, net for the local or state net for your area. If you have a question about a particular net, you can also email the net manager ahead of time so they can give you any updated information about that particular net. Another option is to deliver your message is to send it via WinLink. Well, if you're familiar with WinLink, you can send the copy of the radiogram as an email message to your state's section manager or section traffic manager to be passed along on a regional net. If you have a lot of messages to send, it's easier to send them as WinLink messages as it doesn't tie up the voice nets. Just remember that in order for your message to count, they need to originate from the field day site via RF. After they're in the system, it doesn't matter how the message is delivered. I've got a video on WinLink that tells you more on how to send an email over the air on HF. You wanna, you'll, you're gonna wanna check that out if you're interested in sending the messages via WinLink. Do you have any questions about uh, the national traffic system or NTS radiograms or even formal message handling? Well, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear what I missed and any tips uh, that you may wanna share along for you know, the rest of the viewers. I'll follow up on the conversation, and I might even pull out a few for my next Your Questions Answered video. But for more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. Your support of this channel drives the production of future videos, so you can do a few things for me. You know, number one, if you like this video, you know, give me that big thumbs up. Check out some of the recommended videos alongside here, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Pressing subscribe and the little bell notification will inform you when a future video is released. Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day and 73.